Hi folks and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at Studio One 5.5 and how to use volume automation inside of the project page. Hi folks, Smudge here and welcome to Mastering in the Box, your home for simple guidance on digital mastering and digital audio. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at Studio One version 5.5 and the project page and how to use volume automation. But before we get into the content of today's video, if you do want to know more about digital mastering and digital audio then please make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And if you like this video, Please don't forget to give it a nice big thumbs up. So here we are inside of the project page and in version 5.5, we now have volume automation, which is a very much welcome addition. But I'm actually likening this to constipation medication because not only is it a welcome relief, it actually take, makes the task at hand less strained. But that's enough about dietary habits and let's get on to mastering. So here we are, this is the project page. The tracking question is Curtis Star Walks by IDD QD Sound. And there'll be links in the description down below where you can listen to the full master track. I had the great privilege of mastering this one. And if you haven't checked out the IDD QD Sound YouTube channel, then please do. Links in the description down below. Aria is an absolute ninja at Reaper and there'll be a full mastering breakdown coming soon. I'm not going to be going too much into the actual creative elements of automation. This is going to be part one of two. So this is going to be very much around the functions of using volume automation and then part two will be how we use it in a very much creative context. So let's start with how to actually engage automation. We can actually do that very simply by pressing the A key on our keyboards and as you can see at the bottom of our screens here we now have automation lanes. One thing I've noticed with the volume automation inside of the project page, it is very fiddly and very finicky. So what I'd recommend to you all is to drag this screen and move it as high as you can. Because when you're doing small adjustments, small automation adjustments, it can be very difficult to see. So I'd very much welcome you to increase the size of your automation lanes. So now we have our automation lane set up, one thing we need to actually do is add the volume automation line. And we can do this quite simply by, see if you look at this drop down box it says display off, you wanna click the drop down box and then select the track. And then one thing you'll see here is the volume automation line appearing on our screen. One thing you do just wanna do, I'd recommend this, please just make sure this isn't gray, because if it's gray it means it's off, you wanna make sure it's actually engaged. And we have different automation types, we have read, touch, latch and write. I'm going to just show you the read options because quite frankly when it comes to mastering we are very very much looking at small adjustments. I think a lot of people when they look at automation from a mastering perspective they just say well it's mixing, why do you need to apply automation in the mastering context? We are not looking at applying automation in a mixing context. Firstly, we are applying automation to the overall stereo file, not individual elements, and we are only doing small adjustments. When I say small adjustments, I would recommend my rule of thumb, I don't do more than say 1 dB, either plus or minus, because we are not really looking to you know, really change the, the song wholesale, we're just looking to enhance and create better flow and maybe better emotion across the overall track. So just use that as a rule of thumb, 1 dB either way. But I'm going to leave this in read mode for now and maybe we'll come to some of the other options in a future video. So how do we actually set automation points? Well it's very simple, we will literally just click where we want the autom automation to start and where we want it to end. So say for this instance, so let's say I want to start automation here, I click on the line, and let's say I want it to end here, I click on the line. Now to increase the actual automation volume points, what I need to do is move the, the cursor, the mouse cursor, above those two points that I've set. Then if I left click and drag up, or drag down, we can now apply automation to that selected area. Automation is post fader, which means this is gonna be applied after all your inserts. So you do just wanna be a little bit careful. One thing that's a great, great tool here is if I left click and drag it down, you will see that there's certain aspects. If you see actually on the numbers themselves, the left hand number gives me the 
plus or minus figure how I'm adjusting it. And the right hand figure in brackets gives you your overall peak data. So that's a really great tool. But as you can see, one of the things I really struggle with is when just manually dragging the mouse it moves in such a quick, quick way. If I want to do, just say, a 0.6 or a 0.8 dB increase, it is very, very fiddly. And the way that the automation is worked, it's stepped in 0.3 dB movements. We can, however, bypass that by clicking Shift and then dragging. So if I then do that, you'll see that we get much more control over the automation that we want to apply. So let's say I want to apply 0.8 dB. I literally make sure I'm clicking shift and then drag the automation point. And now here we have just a simple automation increase of 0.8 dBs over the particular area. So that is example number one. So for example two, what I want to do is show you how you can apply an automation fade in. And this can be quite you know, it can be quite a useful tool because in this particular area here, we have a quieter part of the song which builds up almost to like a crescendo. And there's a particular element where the drums start to kick in, they start quiet and then build up and build up to the top of the crescendo where the cymbals kick in. And then we want to maintain the automation across. So we want to increase the overall volume of this entire piece here. But we also have a natural fade out at the end. So what I want to do is fade out the automation to kind of bring it back in line, bring the automation back down to zero dBs to create more of a natural fade out and emphasize that fade out at the end. So let's take a listen to the actual song and hopefully you can really kind of get to hear what I mean. So if we start here, let's take a listen. And at the end of the song, let's take a listen right around here. So you can hear the natural fade out. We want to kind of emphasize that further. So first and foremost, we need to highlight where the drums kick in. This is gonna set our first automation point. So right there, we can see the peak of the waveform right there. That's where the drums start. Where do they finish at the crescendo? There, so that is the symbol here and that's where we want to set our second automation point. And that is gonna be the peak of the bulk of the automation. Then at the end of the track, let's try and find out where the end of the song, where the fade starts. Right there, there's a little peak right there, and then we want to set our final automation point. Right around there, that should be fine. So now we've set the four automation points. So this is going to be the start of the fade in, this is going to be the top of the fade, and this is where we're going to maintain the bulk of the automation using this automation lane. This is where we're going to start to fade out, and that's our end point. So that will return back to zero dBs there. Now, I said before, this is very finicky, and it very much is. Now, if I was to drag the mouse cursor above the main bulk of the automation points here, you will see that we're going to get our little H shape when my computer stops having a little hissy fit. Um, and what we can then do is start to drag that automation point up. So we're going to start with the bulk of the automation point first. So if I shift click, we will increase this by 1 dB. So if I then drag this up to the 1 dB point, right there. Now, what you'll notice, we don't have a fade in and we don't have a fade out. So this actually, this section here is still zero dB. This section here is still zero dB. This section here has been increased to one dB, but there's no fade in. Now what you won't be able to see, and I'm gonna to have to do this in post and really zoom in so you can see what I mean. Underneath this second automation point we've set, Studio One has added another automation point which we can't see. And it's same here under point three, there's another automation point here. So what we have to do is delete those automation points. So I'm gonna have to do this, I can't actually see it, but I think it's around about there. So if I delete that, double click on that actual point that I can't see, it's deleted that point, And you can see we now have a fade up to our crescendo point. Let's try and do the same on the end. And hopefully I'll mess this up so you can actually see what I mean. So if I double click right around here, 
Oh, I didn't mess up. Oh, well, that's a shame. But you can see that we've actually got a fade out as well. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to add a little fade in just to emphasize that crescendo element. It's going to maintain the automation through here, and then we're going to get a natural fade out. So let's take another listen again. And let's just start here for the end and let's take a listen and you'll, you'll hear hopefully that we're going to have the element of the automation with the fade. So it's much more natural sounding. So that's a great way if you want to emphasize certain areas of the song, you can use automation to create a build up, maintain the automation, and then a fade out. So that's a great way to do it. I just want to focus on this area again. Let's do this in bypass. I'm going to play it a couple of times. We'll bypass the automation first, and then hopefully you'll be able to hear the little differences that this is making. And let's try that with this engaged. So it's really just creating that nice big build up. So when the crescendo, when that cymbal hits, it's creating that extra you know, energy and emotion. And that's how I use automation in a mastering context. Now, one thing I just want to say, it is very, very fiddly. And th these little automation points are added here. I can't see them, but there is actually a different way of doing it. So if I was to double click here, let's bypass that, double click that here, let's bypass that. And then what we can actually do is if we can reset our automation points, where the crescendo starts, right there, and let's try it here, right at the end here, right there. Now what we can also do is right click here and we can actually set the value. So if I want that to be 1 dB, 1 dB, just press 1, enter, it automatically creates the fading for you. We can do the same here for the 1 dB. So we want this to be uh, 1 dB because that's actually setting the peak and that's automatically creating the adjustments for us. So if you start applying, applying different points and you notice that you it doesn't sound natural or it's not adding that fade in, I would actually almost recommend this second option. So rather than trying to double click these little points that are underneath that you can't really see, just right click on the automation point and then manually add the adjustment. I really hope that, some, you know, that something is done to make this more user friendly, but this is, it is what it is for the time being. And I just hope that's gonna give you some different options for you to use automation. Like I say, this is video one of two. This is very much a quick video to show you how to apply automation. And in the second video, we'll go start going through the creative elements and how you can use it in a creative context in your mastering. So that's it for today's video, just a real short one on the technical aspects of applying automation inside of the project page. We've gone through a couple of examples where I show you how to set automation points, how to increase the overall automation, whether by 0.3 or 0.1, finer adjustments using the shift key, and then we've looked at how we can create fade-ins and fade-outs as well. So I hope you found it useful. If you did want to know more about digital mastering and digital audio, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications and all of our videos moving forward and if you like the video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up hit the like button because it's going to help youtube to recommend this video to more people so hopefully others can get benefit from as well and if you want to support the channel there'll be links in the description down below where you can support the channel through buymeacoffee.com so all that's left for me to say is i hope you'll keep safe and well i'll see you in the next video coming real soon